Friday, December 27th, 1974. Now, Lowell Thomas. From Washington, from Portugal, from North Australia comes today's news. Good evening, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas for CBS News. The trial of the Watergate Five came to an end today with Judge Sirica all set to give the case to the jury on Monday. Chief Prosecutor James Neal urged the jury to return a verdict that will renew for Americans a confidence that their leaders will be fair, honorable, and just. Jack Benny, whose career spanned half a century, as you no doubt have heard, died in Los Angeles last evening. Typical of his offhand low-key humor were his first words on radio some four decades ago. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny talking, and now there will be a slight pause while you say, who cares? Jack was 80, but the last line of the Los Angeles Times lengthy obituary read, he was 39. Two months ago, we had a report he was ill. Soon after, he wrote me saying he was feeling much better, didn't feel too bad at any time, hoped to set out on another summer stock tour, and then he added, I promise to put in at least one new joke. A typical deadpan, witty Jack Benny remark. What a person he was, one of the great stars of our time. Ski area people are all smiles, 12 inches of new snow in Vermont, and from resorts nearly everywhere, we hear of the best conditions in three years. Some areas in the southwest are digging out of their heaviest snowfall in a decade. Near Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, of Ralph Edwards' fame, searchers found 14-year-old Joe Cordova, who got lost in the deep snow. He hadn't been heard from for two days. Young Joe had been chasing jackrabbits through the snow-covered purple sage. And now for CBS News, this is Lowell Thomas saying so long until Monday. Six minutes after seven o'clock at the time at WCAU. Monday, December 30th, 1974. Now Lowell Thomas. From Rawalpindi, Pakistan. From Managua, Nicaragua. And from Johannesburg, South Africa comes today's news. Good evening, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas for CBS News. The death toll from that northwestern Pakistan earthquake is now put at around 5,000 and may go much higher, with from 15 to 20,000 people injured. In a sudden change of plans, Soviet leader Brezhnev postpones his January visit to Egypt and to Syria and Iraq. Arab papers say the Kremlin is showing its displeasure with Sadat's recent statement ruling out a return of Soviet advisors to Egypt as a condition for accepting Soviet weapons and supplies. But some say that the postponement may be because of ill health. As expected, federal judge John Sirica today sent Watergate to the jury. In his charge, the judge told the jurors, nine men and three women, neither the pardon of former President Nixon nor any other cases or extraneous matters should have any effect on your deliberations or your verdict, said the judge. In a lengthy statement from Bethesda Naval Hospital, Congressman Wilbur Mills today blamed his recent erratic public behavior on what he termed a drinking problem. The Arkansas Democrat, former chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, acknowledges that he considered resigning from Congress, but has now decided to stay on and not permit the problem to spoil his career. In his statement, he also vows to quit liquor, which he also says caused him to suffer blackouts plus fatigue. In anticipation of an American rush to buy gold, the price of gold today hit the record high of $201.40 an ounce in Paris. Prices fell later as traders sought quick profits. Tomorrow, for the first time in more than four decades, Americans will be allowed to buy, sell, and own gold bullion. Many are expected to enter the market. Meanwhile, in South Africa, which produces more than half of the world's gold, Mining people were toasting the skyrocketing prices and windfall profits, for in only four years, the price of gold has quadrupled. One of Britain's best-known sports car lines, the Aston Martin, went out of business today after 60 years. Notable among those who drove the Aston were the fictitious James Bond and the real-life Prince Charles. Here at home, Americans drove more automobiles, fewer miles, at lower speeds during the year, which ends tomorrow night, than ever. In fact, says the Federal Highway Administration, it's the first time in 30 years for highway travel to show a yearly decrease. This despite the presence of more roads and more cars on those roads. For the first time since the days of Thurston and Houdini, rabbits again are leaping out of hats. 
Valuables disappearing under handkerchiefs. Buzz saws whirring toward boxes containing beautiful girls. So says the National Geographic. As we say for CBS News, this is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. The last day of 1974, Tuesday, December 31st, 1974. Now Lowell Thomas. From Washington, from San Juan, from Cairo comes today's news. Good evening, this is Mike Wallace for Lowell Thomas.